Hello, and welcome to Shark Cut Up CNC. Today we're going to talk about the Easy Cabinet Maker Gadget by Jim Andy Ga Easy Gadgets. Here we have the main interface menu for the Easy Cabinet Maker Gadget. The first thing I want to do is I want to go to the project and make sure I got a project pass set up. Here we do. Evidently the gadget has been used. So we'll just go ahead and save that. That's required for the gadget to be able to be used. Alright, we're going to build a base cabinet to start with. So I'm going to kitchen base. And we're going to take a look at the base settings. These are all your settings for the base cabinet. Whether the top has got stretchers or it's a solid top. You've got your shelf count. You've got your drawer count. There you go. All drawer slides. If you got drawers, you're going to need the drawer slides. Got all kinds of information here that can be changed. So we'll just save that. Now we'll go to the draw cabinet drop down menu here and we'll select the base because that's all I want to run right now. We run the gadget, it's thinking, close the alert message, bring out the zoom so I can see all the parts laid out on the various sheets. You got your back, and it even shows the holes for the drawer slides for the mount in the back. You got your shelves, you got your sides with the shelf pin holes, and the assembly holes at the dados. You got your face frame. All the parts there for the base cabinet. Now we'll close the job setup and we'll go create a wall cabinet using the same job setup settings. Bring back the gadget, change this to kitchen wall, and then we'll go to the wall cabinet defaults. And there you have all your defaults for the wall cabinet. And there's not nearly as many there, and that's probably due to the amount of parts involved and other variables. So we'll save that, and we'll also take a look at the milling defaults. The milling defaults are for your dados, your drilling, and shelf pin holes. Whether the dados are th uh, through or half blind, stuff like that. So we'll save that. Now we'll go change this draw cabinet selection to wall cabinet. And then we'll run the gadget. Gadget's thinking. Close the alert. Go to the zoom. And there we have our parts for the wall cabinet. You got your face frame, you got your back, got the shelves, the top and bottom, and the sides with all the vari various <coughs> information. Dados, assembly holes, shelf holes, I mean shelf pin holes. But anyway, we'll go close this because we're going to do both cabinets together next. Use the same settings for the job setup. Now all we got to do is change this to cabinet, kitchen cabinets, because you got both the base, the wall, it's all going to go together. We change that to both. We don't need to look at any of the settings or all the default settings. We just run the gadget. Thinking once again. And here I'm going to mention the alert message. What this is telling you is that at this time, the gadget cannot create new sheets with differing material thicknesses. 
all created sheets have been replicated using the initial sheet thickness from the job setup value. You will need to manually adjust each sheet thickness in the sheet menu, whether it be on the side or on the bottom of your drawing menu. It depends on where you have the tabs set up. To match the cabinet thickness part thicknesses. To give you an idea of what that is, we'll go to sheet two. Sheet two is a half inch thickness, but the sheet is actually 0.75. So we need to change sheet two. See, everything's set to 0.75. So sheet two, we highlight it. Of course, it was already bold, but I'm gonna go highlight it anyway. Of course, that just should, the bold just shows that the sheet is selected in the drawing view. We do an edit and we change it to half inch. Okay, we got one more thing we wanna do. We're gonna close the job setup. We're gonna create a new job setup with the same settings and we're going to go to the gadget once again and we're going to create tool paths and in order to do that we create tools here we have drawer slide pilot holes assembly pilot holes shelf pin holes those are all drills so we'll go to the tool t button there and select a 125 drill Select another 125 drill, and for the shelf pinholes, we'll do the same. Now we've got a pocket clearing bit. That's usually a big hogging bit. So whenever you hear the word clearing, that's uh, big. So we'll do that, and uh, the pocket. That's a profile for the pocket. That's to clean the pocket up. And we use a 125 for that. And then you got your profile for cutting out the parts. And I like to use a down cut. It keeps from having tear out. All right, we're gonna leave this as both for both cabinets. And it's gonna create tool pass for everything. Here you see the tool pass being created. And there we have the alert message once again. We've already changed sheet two. There may be a couple other sheets that need to be changed. We're on the wall sheet. We're gonna go ahead and select the tool pass. I'm gonna preview those tool paths on that one particular sheet. Preview visible. There you see it's creating all the tool paths and it's cutting out the parts. Yeah, goodness. For a wall cabinet, really doesn't have a whole lot to it. Got a couple of holes right there. A couple of holes right there. Let's change that by closing this and going back to the 2D view. And let's say we check uh, sheet four. And we select the tool pass and do a visible on it. Of course, it's not wood, it's only yellow plastic. Meh. Here we have all our shelf pin holes. We have our dados. It's kind of hard to see, but there you go. All laid out and cut. So we'll close this one more time. Create a new job sheet. Bring back the gadget. 
And there you have it. You've seen the base cabinet made, a wall cabinet made, and both cabinets created all their vectors. And then you've seen it with the tool pass assigned. So there is the end of chapter one. Have a good day, fellas. Well, and thank you for watching Shark Cut Up CNC with Jim Andy, Easy Gadgets.